Hey folks, Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. Today we're coming to you from beautiful Northwest Florida, we're out here near Tyndall Air Force Base in Panama City. We have a lot of jets flying today. You're gonna hear some background noise and that sound that you hear is the sound of freedom. So if it gets in the way, just go oorah. But today we're gonna to talk about something brand new that I'm really excited about. We just brought home a brand new 2023 222XD. So we're kind of going to get our first look at it. We're going to give you our opinion, our thoughts, our in-depth review. We've had it for a few weeks now. Hopefully this review will help you if you're in the process of deciding if you want to buy one of these, if you're just interested and you'd like to know about boats, that's what we're here for, to kind of show them off and show you what we've learned. So stick with us, we've got lots to show you. Let's get started on our review. Right away, you'll see we got the 2023 222XD sitting beside us here. Got this really great gray color this year. I don't know the exact word for it, but it is beautiful. I really love this kind of simple light gray. It's almost like a dull gray, uh, but something we had never seen before. We love that. Um, we have taken the uh, time to measure the boat just to get a kind of our, our exact dimensions. The length, 22 and a half feet. Width, eight and a half feet. So you've got a a little over 22 feet high. I thought it was gonna come in a little less, a little bit longer, that's great. Um, right as you step on board, first thing that I really love about this boat, notice you've got this great big broad bow step coming right off the dock. Uh, relatively high to the dock, really high freeboard here. We can step on, have lots of traction. These great marine mat pads. Step down has a traction pad. Any of your Yamaha premium boats are always gonna have these really nice premium marine mat two color pads, uh, both the bow step as well as the, uh, the anchor locker pad. Right inside here, there's a really large anchor locker. One of the things I think Yamaha has learned over the years as you sell boats into a saltwater environment like this, you have to have a large anchor for these really rough water conditions. This boat, just like the 25, has a spot large enough to put in a Fortress FX7 anchor. Uh, so that's really big. That's, a, that's an important thing. Saltwater boaters, we're gonna wanna have a big anchor in the front. We're gonna have to, wanna have a small anchor in the back. So kudos to Yamaha for really listening to the customers talk about that, adding this really large anchor compartment. I've seen this on some of the smaller, or some other boats in the competitive class have really tiny anchor lockers and it just doesn't really make a lot of sense for somebody who's gonna be boating in big water. Also of note, boarding ladder, really simple to deploy. It slides out. It's gonna fold out three steps. You'll take this little rubber band off here to deploy. Once you get co collapsed back in, bring this back in, slide it back into position, and then you're gonna strap it back shut. <clears throat> also, remember, rinse this ladder off after use in salt water. Get all the salt out of all the little nooks and crannies that'll help you to uh, keep it nice for years to come. Navigation lights in the front, very well integrated chrome handles and accents all over the boat. Really has a high-end look. On the front of this boat, you'll look down front here, there is a uh, navigation, a, a uh, docking light, both port and starboard. Those docking lights cannot be operated while you're underway, but if you're coming into the dock in the evening hours and you will need some additional light, you can flip them on, do your docking maneuver, and it's gonna give you a lot of additional help there. Just don't get caught running those out in open water at night. You're gonna get dinged by the Coast Guard for that if you do. Up in the bow, really wide seating area here. We're looking at right at 70 inches. So almost six feet full width here. And then in your length, we have right at 51. Now I'm about six feet tall. I can sit with my feet completely stretched out and actually have room, maybe another five or six inches at the end to kind of slide down and get comfortable. So lots and lots of room for really tall people. This is something we like to talk about at boat shows, and this is something that's really special about a Yamaha boat. This is across all of their platforms, 19s, 22s, 25s, 27s. If this video has been helpful to you, I want you to do me a favor, bomb the like button below. That really helps us out a lot. It helps others find this video easily on YouTube. Let's get back to it. If you notice my knees as I sit back against these cushions, if I'm sitting opposite 
someone else is facing me, their knees are about here, there's tons and tons of room in between, you're not getting into a jammed in, tiny little narrow bow. You have lots of room to sit back, to socialize, and to have room. That's a big deal. And Yamaha has really captured that in all of their boats uh, and, and been doing it for years. So I really love that. In the front, let's talk some more about configurability and seating. You have these cushions that are in place. If you want to take these out, you got some small kids that want to ride up front, be part of the action. They can sit in these little rumble seats grab a hold of the handrail, put their feet down. Now we can sit four in the bow, really comfortable, cruising along. Everybody wants to be in this front area when you're cruising, so this really makes it nice. A note of warning, do not overload this area. If you have a lot of people on this boat, you get the bow really loaded down, you take a wave over the bow, could be a problem. So be cautious not to overload this area. Boat safe. Let's point out another really cool feature. Not only do we have these great filler cushions that make into seating both left and right, additionally, if we want to make this area a bit more configurable, Yamaha has been doing this for years. I think since 2010, when I first saw this, you have these little center cushion fillers. Notice that they have a shape to them, kind of tapered. And this area is tapered kind of like this, right? So we're going to follow this shape, place these tabs in these troughs, right take the second one while the seats are flipped up if you notice we're going to have that same shape but in reverse place this into the track once that's in place trap it by folding the seats back down we have a sun pad the seat cushions trapping those tabs prevents these cushions from blowing out underway if you're driving down the road trailering or if you're cruising out to your favorite spot the cushions aren't going to flow away blow away so that's really great i love that configurability taking it one step further flip the cushion up remove this forward cushion fold these cushions back down notate these little tracks here these little notches that are molded into the fiberglass see how this has a curvature here at the bottom we're going to align those tabs with those notches and now we can ride three across the front as we're cruising. So lots of configurability. They've stayed true to those routes. They've done this for years and this is no exception. Configuration is a big deal, making the boat your own. I love how Yamaha's done this. Staying in this seating uh, zone for now, as we walk back, we've noted that we can seat really up to four here. We have two more seats inside here, captain's chairs. These are fully tilt and turn. And then the back here, we have a wraparound U-shaped bench. Really comfortably seat one, two, three, four additional. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This boat is rated for 10 people. That's what's recommended as kind of your max capacity. I would say more than that would be legal if you have enough life jackets, but really don't want to push it past 10. In the back, we have more seating, but let me make this note real quick here. This is important. Do not ride in this area while the boat is underway, don't get caught sitting back here. This is a ticketable offense. You can get in trouble for that. There are issues with carbon monoxide. You can actually get, uh, get hurt uh, from, from breathing the fumes. You can fall overboard uh, because obviously there's nothing to keep you inside the boat. Those are things that you want to just be aware of. I've seen people back here surfing and sitting back here relaxing and, not, and that's fun, but it's dangerous. So don't do that, okay? Use this area the way it was intended. Back here in the back, another really cool thing that I've noted on the seating here. The seating is double wide. So I can sit down and there's still enough room here for my wife to sit with me or my kids to sit with me and kind of relax together. Previous versions of these boats, the cushions were a little bit narrower and so it didn't quite give you that same amount of room. All right, moving on, let's talk about storage. One of the things that I think Yamaha has done really well over the years is really think about the user and what storage needs they may have you're bringing a crew on board with you. You got family and friends and food and drinks and all that stuff. Uh, you got to have a place to put it. They've done a pretty good job of that over the years. We're going to talk about some of that in this segment here. Right up front in the very back here, every Yamaha boat comes with a clean-out port access hatch. In this hatch, we'll talk about in a later part of this video, the clean-out ports. But in this hatch, you also have wet storage. Uh, wet storage in this area is going to be about... I'd say seven or so inches deep, uh, roughly five feet wide, four and a half feet wide, uh, maybe about 15 inches in depth here. Um, really great for putting towels, 
tow ropes, uh, anything that you don't want to bring in the boat that's wet. This area is going to get water in it when you're running. Uh, just bear that in mind. There is access for mechanical in this area here. So if you want to go in and do any kind of maintenance items, if you want to do any kind of underwater lights, you want to run some wires or whatever the case, this tray does come out. It's siliconed in place. There's a drain in place here that bails water overboard. So that water does not get down inside the boat. It bails all overboard, uh, but nice storage area. Also, we've used this area quite a lot, believe it or not, for steel shot ballast. So if you're going to go surfing, you want to add some extra steel shot bags, 50 pound bags fit well in here. I think we've been able to get about 200 pounds in that area. So that's going to give you a little bigger wave. Moving up here to the next level. On the back side here, you've got, these are also wet storage compartments. You have them both port and starboard. I would say that this is equal, uh, going to be able to put a steel shot ballast bag or six or seven in here. If you want to stack those bags on, really increase the ballast, you can do that. Mainly used for wet storage, but you can use it for however you like. Boat comes from the factory with a Coleman cooler. It's got its own little designated spot there. Over on the starboard side, we have a small storage locker here. This is where I'm keeping my stern anchor, uh, obviously for anything that you might have need of. On the port side, a little bit disappointed to see this. This locker is now consumed by the batteries and electrical switches. Uh, little storage in the back if you wanted to use some smaller bags, maybe a tool kit or something like that. Opening the engine hatch. On a non-wake edition boat, boat that's not an X model, over here to the port and starboard of the engine, you have these little shelves. And I do not believe they put these divider shelves in place here, but you do have some area that you can stow things if you want to keep them in the engine compartment. If you don't have those dividers, I'd recommend that you build your own before you put something in here. That way things that are stored don't slide down on top of the engines. They have chosen to stow their ballast bags there. Moving forward, we have storage here. This is a drink prep station, as well as a place to stow any kind of important papers, cell phone, things you wanna keep out of the sun. Lockable storage box down below. Inside this locker, what I really love is the addition of this dedicated trash can. One of the things people really forget when you go boating, you gotta have a place to put your trash. So this trash can can be taken out, removed, dump the trash, bring it back. It's got its own dedicated place to hang. You have a large storage area inside here. Yamaha taking a cue from their uh, FSH boats have found a way to stow the leg out of the way with these little clips. Like the use of all the polymers. These are uh, made from starboard. It feels like a really nice uh, long lasting marine lumber. Stainless steel fasteners. Stainless steel really kind of all over the boat. This is not lockable, just FYI. Over on the opposite side, this area, for those of you that have a wake version, you're gonna notice you have your drive controls as well as your uh, Yamaha wake booster. Uh, hydraulics are all contained inside this area. So what was once a very large open storage area on a wake boat, you're gonna give that up for all the additional goodies. If you have a uh, a boat that's not equipped with drive or a boat that's not equipped with the wake booster, the hydraulic wake booster, then this should be an open storage compartment for you to use. While I'm talking about it, this little guy here does fold open and this is gonna give you a wind break for those cold mornings. You're going out boating or maybe those cold evenings you're coming back. Close these guys up. It's gonna protect you from the wind. Additional storage is found in the floor. Conventionally, this would be a ski locker, but on the wake version, you're gonna see a pump with a ballast bag this is all controlled through your Connect system. You're gonna have additional storage in the front. We've got our life jackets up here today. This is not dry storage, this is gonna be wet storage. Eventually you're gonna see water getting down in here. But tons of storage there. You have storage in the port and starboard seating areas. Decent size, good for life jackets, other goodies. Same on the starboard side. And then finally rounding it out, with the anchor locker. For those of you that are not familiar with Yamaha boats, the real key feature that launched Yamaha into its prominence, and really the, one of the major reasons why they're number one today still, is this open swim platform. Most boats have a large engine with a large outboard or a large, um, you know, kind of rear uh, mounted engine with lots of gear, and it takes up a lot of this space, and so this area is not quite as open. With a Yamaha, the engines are compact, they're placed low in the hull, and you have this ability to kind of create this terrace on the rear, this patio, if you will, which is so inviting. 
we work boat shows, we watch people come up and they see this and they just kind of, their eyes light up and they go, wow, this is, this is really impressive. There's nothing impeding. There's no uh, sharp objects for you to catch your fingers and toes on. It's uh, very low to the water. You can see I'm really only about maybe five inches or so off the water surface to get in. There's a boarding ladder, so it's easy on, easy off. Really easy uh, for those that might have mobility issues to get on and off of a, a Yamaha jet boat. Really super shallow draft, only talking about maybe 15 inches sitting dead still. So uh, really welcoming and inviting environment. This has been one of their major design elements all throughout the years, and this year, no exception. Tons and tons and tons of features. We'll try to go through those and keep this, uh, this video brief. Right away, you see you have this large swim platform, built-in non-skid pads on the 222. You're gonna get the marine mat two-tone pads. On the uh, entry levels, you're gonna get a hydroturf pad that's uh, similar but single color. On the 222X, and I believe on the 222 across the board, you're gonna get these really nice seat cushions that are mounted and they actually are removable. So if you wanna take them off, stow them away, you've got these nice little C-channel uh, slotted tabs here. You slide these in, little snaps, snap them down so they don't blow away going down the road. Have those on both sides. Again, double wide. I love that feature because we have so much room now to sit two here and two here. Grab handles as you come in from the water. Going to be on that boarding ladder. Grab handles to help you get in and out. Uh, of note, on the 222XD, because of the built-in hydraulic weight booster, we do not get the underwater seating. I noticed that about this boat. I was a little let down. That's okay, we're gonna get over it. But those of you that have the 222SD, 222SE, any of the 222 models, and I believe also on the 220s, the underwater seating should be a standard feature. You'll see a little aluminum receptacle where your seat cushion will slide in place. Gives you a really nice way to swim up, kind of hang out at the back of the boat if you're in deeper water. Really love that feature. Swim platform has a remote control to control the stereo. You control it from your phone or obviously from this remote location. Drink holders all around. We have four chrome capped drink holders. Flush ports, I love this. They're out here for us saltwater guys, right there, easy to access. Bring your hose up, quick connect, quarter turn to the right, turn your engine on, turn your water on, you're flushing. You have those both sides. We have a table mount location here. So if we want to sit, relax, have drinks, food, snacks, whatever, hanging out, little table comes from the inside, goes to the outside. I love that versatility. Really makes a great feature. We talked about this in the previous segment. We have our wet storage, both here and here. Nice place for wet towels, dock lines, etc. Dock lines are so critical. You know, you really don't think about that when you're getting ready to buy a boat, but if you're going to be going out tying up at a dock, going to a restaurant, whatever. It's important to bring your dock lines with you. So having a place to store things like this, I've seen boats in this class not have any storage in the rear. And those boat uh, makers probably should take some notes from people that boat in these types of environments, how important that is. Large storage compartment back here in the back, wet towels, wet ropes, whatever you have wet, stow it in here, keep it out of the middle of the boat. Now this here, for you guys that are not familiar with Yamahas, or maybe you are, this is probably the, one of the second reasons why Yamaha boats are so dominant within this space. This clean out port system has become really my best friend over the years because I've jet boated a lot. I boat in a coastal environment with lots of seagrass. If you suck up any kind of debris, uh, any trash, grass, whatever, that can possibly end your day if you don't have a clean out port. Yamaha thought about that way on early in like 1996 when they first launched these things. They came up with this patented system. They're the only ones that have it. This clean out port, you twist, pop it out. It's revised this year, by the way, brand new for 2023. It's a little different than years past. We'll talk about that some later. But now I have direct access down into the inlet where the impeller is, where the shaft is. I could reach down, clear any sort of clog that might be there Throw the clog overboard, take my clean out plug, lock it back in place. It's a quarter turn to the right, lock it out. Now it's locked in place. This new version this year is actually spring loaded. So you feel it go down, twist, and then pop back up. I really think that's great. You have them both port and starboard side here. So if you ever take off and you feel like you don't have any power, come back and check your clean out ports. Maybe you didn't lock them in place right. Stainless steel all around, I like that. Tons of cool things about this swim platform. Moving on, we have vents back here, chrome, uh, chrome capped. 
for our engine. Uh, so as we start to ventilate any kind of fumes out of the engine compartment, that's where your vents are. Wet sounds upgraded sound system, you're gonna have that on your X models, SD models, SE models, any of your upgraded S where you've got these nice cushions, you're gonna get the, the uh, speakers. I believe on the entry level models, you're not gonna get speakers on the swim platform. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think that I am. And we have one last little cool thing, a little charging port right here. Looks like a standard 12 volt connection. For those of you that want to use your inflatable devices, pumping up tubes and things like that, you can do it outside. First, just having to drag a cord all the way out from the inside. Well, that rounds out the swim platform. I really like all these features this year. They've done a great job. It's open, it's inviting. And uh, like many years in the past, it's, it's very well done. Let's talk about power. Performance boat, like the 222 models, you're gonna get the upgraded 1.8 liter high output, 180 horsepower package times two. All your 22 foot boats are gonna be twin engine equipped. High output's gonna be twin 180s, 360 total. If you have entry level boats like the SX220, AR220, you're gonna get the TR1 engines. These are three cylinder, about 115 horsepower a piece for a total of 230. Both boats provide significant power, get you up in the low 40s on the entry level, upper, upper 40s, maybe even low 50s on the high line, but acceleration is very quick to plane. Gonna have more than enough power to do the water sports that you need, all the things that will go out and have a good time. For the extreme guys that really want the biggest and the baddest and the best, quickest acceleration times, maybe the strongest pull for that wakeboarder or that surfer, definitely wanna look at the, the 222 models. Bigger engines, bigger power. Uh, fuel injected, naturally aspirated on all these. We have not seen any superchargers uh, in the 222 uh, class, so just FYI on that. Very low maintenance. One of the things Yamaha is really well known for is durability, dependability. Uh, very minimal of things that you need to really concern yourselves with on this boat. I would say once a year, you want to do some maintenance such as your uh, winterization, uh, oil change, spark plugs, that sort of thing. Other than that, just put gas in it and go. Yamahas are known for very few things involved with maintenance, very minimal cost of ownership, very low cost of ownership. Uh, unlike some boats that we've seen that require a lot of things on an annual basis, this one is not that way. So if you're looking for a boat that's dependable, long-lasting, just gas it and go, Yamaha's gonna be your friend. While we're inside the engine compartment here on the 222XD, if you will notice also we have the ballast bags, both port and starboard here. Those bags can be in, uh, filled with water while you're underway. Uh, has pumps that are connected to the connect screen and we'll show that in a later segment of the video. Notice that it has stainless steel strut here. It's a single center stainless steel strut, long lasting, marine rated. This year I'm also noticing a really heavy duty blanket here that finally has been bolted up. In years past, they used an adhesive to stick this stuff up and the adhesive would fail over a couple of years and it would kind of start falling down like a blanket. But now this is really well done. This is secured in place with hardware. It's held in place so that it's not gonna fall. This is gonna contribute to this thing staying in place for a long time. Let's talk about the helm. I'm gonna kick the switch on here, turn the power on. You'll see right away this really large, kind of right justified 12 inch connect screen. Powers up, boots up quickly, That's a little faster than the ones we've seen in previous years. I also love the fact that the screen is right justified. Being right justified, it gives you a bit more useful vision out front. It doesn't obstruct your vision quite as much. And it also lends itself towards moving some other components over to the left where you can control with your fingers, as well as your passengers might also be able to control some of these radio controls and things uh, from this side. So very thoughtful. You notice in the back behind the connect screen, we've got these little connection points here. This is a five volt, kind of a rapid charge port for USB. Connect your smartphone or whatever you got. It says iPad 2.4 amp. We also have an auxiliary port connection here for those of you that want to connect any kind of other streaming device or MP3 player, et cetera. One of the things I'm really most excited about for this year is this brand new wireless charger that also serves as a phone holder. Take our phone, even though the phone case is on, we can just kind of slide it up here, put our phone in place. It holds it securely, but if you notice, it says charging while the case is on. I love that. Obviously we want to turn it, adjust it, kind of make it the position that we want. Easy access for the driver, as well as easy access for those that maybe are in, in the boat, passengers that want to interact with the phone. It's now on the left side versus the right, where it was in previous generations. So love that. One of my favorite features of this boat this year. In addition to the uh, helm controlled uh, phone charger, phone holder, really cool innovation this year over on the dash, all of the dash pockets feature wireless charging. So we place our phone in, actually charges through the phone case. Really love that feature. 
Additional creature comforts that we're noticing on these Highline models like the 222, all the upgraded marine mat flooring, non-skid, two-color design, stick-on pads on the upper areas, swim platform, and inside the cockpit, you have snap-down version in case there's a situation where you want to take the non-skid pads out of the boat. Up on the top here, 222 XD guys, you're going to get this really nice, I believe this is a PTM Edge. It is. Water sports, kind of a 180 degree mirror. Very nice. Billet aluminum, anodized. Pull the little handle here, it's going to stow in the down position. Pull the handle here, it's going to stow in the up position. It's got a little friction lock on the back, so we want to adjust this a little bit, make it a little bit more fine-tuned or stay where we want it. Really nice. So really big improvement. If you're going to be doing water sports, that mirror is a big deal. Down here at the, the controls, we've got our cup holder. Really nice. Always thinking about us. Yamaha, thank you for giving lots of drink holders on this boat. Controls over here. This is our connection point here to connect with Connext. We're going to be able to use this kind of like a mouse, tabbing left, right, selecting, rotating for volume controls, etc. So really helpful in controlling uh, what we do with our music and working with Connext. So you have your home button here. This is going to bring us back to our home function on the Connect screen. We want to adjust the volume, just press the volume button. That's going to then allow us to control that volume setting while the music's on. Cancel button, it's going to cancel previous command. We have our cruise uh, no wake setting buttons here. This is really helpful if we want to increase our speed incrementally by 100 RPMs with the press of the plus button or minus 100 RPMs with the press of the minus button. Also, this little trackball here allows us to track left, right, rotate, and select all with the touch of the little trackball here. Let's talk about drive. A lot of people are not familiar with this feature. Uh, it's been talked about a lot. We want to kind of go into depth now and talk about drive and how it works and how to use it. So first off, I'm going to start my engines, pressing my port and starboard engine start buttons. Now that we have the engine started, we're in neutral. <clears throat> on the right hand side, down low on the connect screen, notice you've got these two little throttle levers here in the picture. We're going to take that throttle lever and press that once. That goes into single throttle mode. We're not gonna use that for this particular part of the video. We're gonna press it again. And now you see a picture of the steering wheel. Now we're in the drive mode. Drive mode is active, meaning that my throttles are not engaged anymore. I'm now activating the throttles on these paddle shifters here up on the, on the steering wheel. The steering rotation normally takes about 270 degrees to turn full lock to lock. But with drive activated, my full steering goes from left to right in roughly about 180 degrees, maybe a little bit less than that. <clears throat> so I can go full left to full right very quickly. The nozzles are going full turn, but the steering wheel is doing it in a lot less rotation. If I want to go forward, I just simply press the plus button if you bring the camera in tight. If I want to go forward, I'll simply squeeze the forward lever. If I want to go in reverse, there is a reverse lever here. I'll squeeze the reverse lever. And as I squeeze, the more I squeeze, the more power I have. If I let off, the power backs off and it goes back to neutral automatically. Same thing on the right side. Squeeze the plus, it's gonna go forward. The harder I squeeze, the more RPM I get. The less, if I, if I back off the, the, the squeeze motion there, the RPM's back down. If I let go completely, it goes back to neutral. Watch this, bring the camera in tight. Notice on this right side, it says in. I'm gonna squeeze, notice it goes to forward. Let go, it goes back to neutral. Let's do the same thing on the port side. Squeeze, it says reverse, now it goes back to neutral. So it's instantaneous, it doesn't require you thinking about that part. Also, another thing I've noted, Yamaha didn't advertise this, but this thing sounds like Iron Man when you turn it. So you buy a drive equipped boat, you're gonna sound like Iron Man. I'm gonna show you some maneuvers here featuring the drive function. If I wanna go forward, I'll squeeze the right side lever. If I wanna go in reverse, I'll squeeze the left side lever. Notice that if I squeeze the right side lever here to go forward, the light press gives you very low RPM. If I squeeze it hard, it increases the RPM. If I let go, it goes back to neutral. If I grab reverse, squeeze lightly, a little bit of RPM, a lower RPM. Squeeze it harder, a lot more RPM. And as I release, it goes back to neutral. So it's very intuitive. If I want to control the boat going to the right, I'll steer to the right. I'll give it that right side paddle. The boat's gonna go right. If I wanna go left in reverse, left side steering, left side paddle, it's gonna take the stern back around in the direction that I'm steering. 
So remember with drive, all Yamaha boats, they steer like a car or like other types of boats. When I steer in reverse, if I steer to the right, grab the paddle, the right stern of the boat is gonna to go to the right. If I wanna to go to the left, steer to the left, grab that left side paddle, activate, that's gonna give me the stern to the left. I'm gonna go back forward now. It's right side paddle, it says plus on the paddle, so that obviously tells you you're gonna go forward. The left side paddle says minus, that's so an indicator that's gonna be in reverse. Another popular maneuver that people like to do inside close spaces is a 360. With drive, that makes it super simple. To start your 360, turn the steering wheel in the direction you wanna go, give it a little bit of forward with that plus paddle. Now go hard left and squeeze the reverse paddle. Go back to the right, squeeze the plus paddle. Go back to the left and squeeze the reverse paddle. I'm gonna repeat this all the way through the maneuver. Really simple 360 that anybody can learn really quickly. All right, now let's approach this dock here. We're gonna approach with a, a bow first approach. We're gonna go in very slow, as I've always said. Never approach a dock any faster than you wanna hit it, so we're just gonna kinda of crawl in here. Notate your winds before you get there. Make sure that you don't have any winds pushing you one direction versus another, so you know how to respond, how to align as you come into the slip. Just gonna give it small bursts as we come in. We feel like we're off a little bit, just give it a little reverse. Opposite control there, that'll bring the stern around. And now we're just gonna come in real nice and slow. Again, just small bursts of power. We don't wanna give it a lot. A little tap. Another little tap here. Give it some reverse to slow yourself down. We don't want to come in too fast. As we near the end of the slip here, just a little bit of reverse to bleed that power off. Now we'll turn the engines off, run up and secure our dock lines. One of the things that is important to Yamaha engineers is when you control the boat at low speeds, you want to bring in as much intuitiveness uh, as much control that you might already have, experience that you might already have driving a car or other boats, uh, they wanted to bring that into the Yamaha experience. Let me explain what I mean. When I drive a car, if I wanna to steer to the right, I turn to the right. If I wanna steer to the left, I turn to the left. When I put it in reverse, turn the wheel to the right, the back of the car goes to the right turn to the left, the back of the car goes to the left. That's what you're used to and that's what most boats do. Uh, some jet boat brands, it's opposite to that. So you steer to the left in reverse, the boat goes right. It's a little bit counterintuitive. So Yamaha has really focused on that over the years. It's been a major thrust for them to kind of think about the consumer, to think about the driver, and what's gonna be easy for you in that situation to learn quickly, to become an expert quickly. So that's no exception here. You maintain that intuitiveness with the drive system. All right, let's talk about this section now. We're gonna do connect, some of the buttons on the dash, and our throttles. Right away, you'll notice we have the E-Series model here on the 222XD. It's gonna have twin independent electronic throttles, so we can actually run these throttles independent of one another, or as a single throttle. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you real quick here. Right now we're in dual throttle mode. You see on the screen we have these dual throttles shown. If we press this button once while the engines are running, it now says single lever mode. So now this left side throttle is gonna engage both the left and right engines at the same exact time. We wanna get out of that mode and choose the drive, drive mode. Now by pressing and showing the picture of the steering wheel, you'll see the word drive engaged. Now we're able to use the paddle controls on the steering wheel. We're gonna go back to the dual throttle mode, simply tap, now we're back to the dual throttle mode. Let's talk about these buttons on the dash here. Horn, blower, this is gonna ventilate any fumes that you might have inside of the engine compartment. Always recommend running that per Yamaha's uh, instructions at about four minutes if, you, if the boat's been running or sitting for a, a long extended period of time. Run that before you start the engine. Uh, you're gonna uh, get any sort of vapors or uh, fumes out of the engine compartment. It's gonna be a real safety 
uh, thing to follow. Uh, accessory switches, you have two here if you want to add some sort of accessory, uh, underwater lights, uh, additional solar chargers or whatever. Uh, adding something to those banks there, that's what that's there for. Your navigation lights, you'll be able to set your nav and anchor lights here. And notice that you can tap those on and off on the dash as well. Blower can also be tabbed on from inside uh, the screen as well as this um, uh, separate switch here, as well as your bilge. There's a lot of these things that are built in kind of as redundancies. Just in case one of these were to fail, you have these as backups. We'll turn those off. You have your bilge pump here. Switching the bilge on is going to activate the bilge, but it does not mean the bilge is constantly running. The bilge will cycle on and off occasionally. If it senses water, it'll pump the water until the water is gone. Then it'll, tur it'll turn itself off. Occasionally you'll hear the bilge pump come on and then cycle off. That's what it's intended to do, is to give you, just to occasionally check for water. Uh, and if it doesn't see water, it switches itself off again. We'll switch that off. Start stop buttons, both on the port and starboard. On an E-Series model, you're going to have these electronic start-stop buttons. On a standard uh, non-E-Series model, you've got the keys. You'll simply turn the keys to start. Down low, we have an ignition switch and a safety lanyard. It's important while you're underway to clip this safety lanyard to your life ja jacket or to your belt loop. It's important, especially for those that are uh, boating around where you might see Coast Guard or whatever. They will ticket you if they don't see you wearing this. So that's very, very, very important. Tilt steering on the steering wheel. All Yamahas come equipped with tilt steering. Love that feature. Let's get into the connect screen. We won't go into too much in depth on this video, but we do want to kind of run through this real quick. Over on the left side, you'll see your fuel. We're sitting at about 13% right now. We have batteries showing 14.1, 14.0 volts on our start and house batteries. Our depth gauge right now is showing 100 feet. That's inaccurate, mainly because we're sitting at the dock. We're kind of blowing water around and the, the uh, depth puck back there is not able to see the water depth clearly. So now it's showing nothing. Uh, it does work fairly well, but in this situation with the engine idling in super shallow water, sometimes you may get a, a dash dash like that. And that's, that's normal. The water is just too dirty to really read uh, clearly. Uh, we talked about this before, your bilge, blower, nav, anchor lights, all these connections at the bottom of the screen here. We'll switch those off. Up here at the top, you've got your time. We can set our time to 12 or 24 hour. We can set it to our central uh, time, daylight savings time, all those things there. We can get over into our nav. I have not used this extensively, but we do have charts. So that's very helpful, especially if you're trying to navigate in places you're not familiar with. Love this feature. I want to learn more about it. We'll do a video about that at a later date. Getting into our uh, more of our settings here and, and uh, uh, fuel gauges, uh, distance, trip distance, fuel economy, fuel flow, water temperature, average speed, highest speed, port starboard engine hours, all those are found here inside of this little uh, measurement icon. Getting over here into your target speed for you wake surfers and wakeboarders, this is where you're going to set your speeds. You can set your target speed. Let's say we're going surfing, we want to select 11 miles an hour. Well, we'll select 11.2. Come up here, set 11.2. We're going to then activate that. We'll come back out of it. We'll set our acceleration manual, slow, medium, or fast. We're going to have an expert today. Let's go fast. Our ballast, we can set up the ballast we'd like to have. Surf point, if we're going to surf port side, activate port side. And we should be able to deploy it by pressing the down button. That's going to activate that wake booster to go in the down position. To bring it back up, simply press the up button. Now it's going to stow, it's going to flip back up. You can run one at a time. Don't run both at the same time. It's not going to work. Get back out of that. Back over here to our uh, target speed. You also have the ability to kind of set in some preset codes or preset uh, titles for who uh, is using the boat that day and their presets uh, and what they choose to surf. So you can set up, it looks like five here, I believe. Five different presets. Really cool. You have a set button at the bottom here to lock that in. Moving on. Going over to our audio, you can Bluetooth connect here. So I have my phone connected. We can connect, control all of our music here. You can go in and connect other devices. You can close out of that. Go into your source mode. You have AM, FM, weather, Bluetooth, and auxiliary. And you even have zone control. So I can go in and change the volume values on each of those individual zones. You don't want it quite as loud on the swim platform, turn it down. You want to jam the swim platform, but turn it down inside. So there's your subwoofer. Here's your main. This is going to be the interior, so all is one. Everything's all controlled right there. Click the back button, get over here to your boat icon. It shows you your helm lights, 
Got these really cool blue LEDs. I like to see those at night. That's really awesome. Got your courtesy lights, dock lights, underwater lights. All that's controlled through the boat icon. Over in our settings, we have our menu here. Time, depth, unit, brightness, wellness, language, tuner region, and auto volume. So a quick little tour there through your connect screen. You'll find out more about this when you get a chance to use yours, but wanted to show you a quick walkthrough on that. Additional creature comfort on the 222 XD model, and I believe this is also in the XE models as well. Really nice high-end aluminum, built aluminum anodized weightboard racks. These are PTM water sports. Really nice padding built in to protect your boards. Built in strap. So if you want to strap your boards in place, they're going to come up and over, snap in place. And then you have three different storage positions. So in, if you're coming into a tight dock, back, and also all the way out when you want to pull those boards outside and you're not using them. Have those on both the port and the starboard side on the X models. Now we're going to show you how to deploy the Bimini now. This is a little bit of a challenge if you've never done this before. We've taken the Bimini out of the boot. We're going to fold this under. See these little chrome poles here? chrome legs, they're going to go forward and we're going to go over the top of the tower. We're going to bring the whole canvas over. This hole is going to align itself with the tow point. The other will align itself with the navigation light. As we flop this down, you'll see there's a little pocket that has a Velcro tab and these little legs here are going to fold out. In the forward portion of the tower, there are these little receptacles. We're gonna take these legs, we're going to fold them out and align them with these receptacles. Both sides. Press them in firmly, making sure that this material is kind of round in this corner here. See how that follows that curvature? Same thing over here. This will make for a good fit. See how it's pulling nice and tight now? This rear portion is now folded up and you have this hardware. We're gonna put this little ball in this socket on both sides. That's gonna apply that back tension to pull it all tight. If you see that it's still wound up, it needed to be unraveled once more. What we can do is we can take this little ball and socket here, rotate it, pull it up. It's sitting free. Opposite side, rotate the ball and socket. You're gonna align the little, little cutout part with that ball so it frees itself. All right, now we have it loose. We're going to have to unwind it. All right, we flipped it over. The main, kind of the forward ball, not the one that has the adjustable spring-loaded adjuster, adjuster, but the, the one that's in the front. Slide it back in place and rotate this ball that's of oh, this little pin that's going to lock this out. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Remember this one here with the spring loaded adjustment point that's going to be into the rear. Connect the front, rotate the tab that's trapped. Now we'll take this little gray tab, we'll slide this back. And this is gonna align with this. See how this has got this little adjustable uh, rotating pin? See how it has the little cutout? That ball is gonna align with that cutout in order to enter this slot. And then once it's in place, we'll turn it and that secures it in place, it traps it. Flip this, pull down with my right hand, and now I'm gonna rotate and that's locked in place. We've got tension, do the same thing over here. Release. Notice I'm pulling down with my hand. So as I'm pulling this down, I'm pulling with my right hand. I'm gonna secure this into the slot. I'm gonna pull tight and with tension applied, I'm gonna rotate this tab. And now that's secured in place. The canvas is on nice and tight. If you want to increase the tension, you can adjust this a bit shorter. It requires a little bit more force. It'll be a little bit tighter. Last step, we'll go in the front. We'll take this little flap and we'll flap it closed. And that's a good Bimini deployment. While we're talking about the top, we have our upgraded sound system on this 222XD. All wet sounds, we have, looks like eight inch 
pans up here on the tower. They're mounted over and out of the way, which I love. Less likely for you to hit your head on one of these, mounted over to the side like this. It's a really great point. If we want to stow this tower in the down position, let me show you how to do that real quick here. I'm going to use my cameraman for part of this because this is a two-person operation. We're going to take the knobs on the back edge of the tower. While my cameraman applies up force on the tower, I'm going to unscrew this little retaining bolt back here on the back. We'll do the same thing over on the starboard side. Again, maintaining up force. Once that's done, I'm going to come relieve him so he can come around and show you what we're doing. The tower is going to come down. We want to tr put the mirror closed and out of the way. Notate the, the speakers here. Make sure it's not going to hit anything. If the windshield's getting in the way, flip that closed. And now we're in the down position. If you have, I got a low bridge clearance or trying to get into a smaller garage, maybe that helps you. Obviously, you want to stow the bimini away before you do this. Also, I'm noticing with the bimini open, this little eye right here, this little uh, bolt hole location is not accessible. So in order to stow this in the down position, let's say you're trailering with the tower down, that bolt hole location has got to be visible in order to put the bolt in. The bimini will have to be stowed away in order to access that. All right, let's do it in reverse. To secure, have someone help you hold the tower in tension. Tighten that down firmly. Same thing on the opposite side. Press down while you twist. It's important to get this fully engaged and not cross-threaded. You really want to secure this tower well. Make sure that it is firmly adjusted because if you don't do this right, the tower could fail while you're in operation. So be careful. All right, let's talk about creature comforts. One of the things I really love about these new upgraded 222s is the stereo sound system. I connected to my Bluetooth yesterday and this thing jams. I mean, it really has a great sound. Looking at speakers around the boat, I've got one, two in the front. I've got three, four in the middle. I've got five, six with my cans. I've got seven, eight. Uh, there are one of each on the swim platform. And then we have a subwoofer here mounted low. Amplifiers for your powered sub. Tons of power, great sound. Everybody knows when you go boating, you're gonna be drinking. Hopefully you're drinking responsibly. I'm drinking Coke Zeros. Whatever you're drinking, you gotta have a cup holder. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Over here on the dash, 12, 13, 14. There's one there, 15. One on this side, 16. In the back, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And if you count the two on the table, it makes 22 drink holders. Tons of creature comforts on this boat. Well, that rounds out our detailed review on the 2023 Yamaha 222XD. We really like this boat quite a lot. We're excited to have it. We've only had it for a few hours now, but we're really looking forward to getting out on the water, spending some more time with my family, just getting to know it, maybe enjoying some surfing or whatever. But I'll tell you what, if you're interested in a boat like this, this boat has a lot to offer. Yamaha has a lot to offer. We own this boat. We've had it for a few weeks now, and we're learning more about it every day. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be glad to answer any of your questions for you. You can find information about the boat uh, and more things that we offer on JetBoatPilot.com. Contact us page. You can find us there. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, any of those places, we're always there, there to answer your questions. That's what we're here for. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.